What is up everyone? I am back with a brand new video and I think this is going to be the best one yet. I have two CyberFlood ports with a Spirant Network emulator in between. We are going to be simulating HTTP traffic while at the same time sending DDoS traffic from the port on the left to the server on the right. This is the CyberFlood dashboard. It shows the number of running tests, system resource information, and test cloud information at the top of the page. It also shows the current running test and the previous test from me and any other user that has been using this instance of CyberFlood. I am going to click on the test builder menu at the top of the screen and go to volumetric DDoS. This test determines the device under test ability to process legitimate traffic while under a DDoS attack. Now that I am in the volumetric DDoS attack test configuration window, I am going to set the test duration for 30 minutes. The pass fail criteria can be configured based on the incoming rate of the DDoS packets and also the incoming rate of the HTTP traffic. The test will pass if the device under test is limiting the DDoS traffic while successfully processing the HTTP traffic. By default, the test will pass if the incoming rate of the DDoS traffic is under 270 megabits per second and the incoming rate of the HTTP traffic is at least 970 megabits per second. CyberFlood can also be configured to send only DDoS traffic without HTTP but I'm going to keep the HTTP traffic for this scenario. The debug packet trace toggle switch allows you to save packet captures from the test run. CyberFlood DDoS supports two test types. Client only allows you to test to a real server. The client server test type means that CyberFlood is going to emulate the clients and the servers for testing the device in the middle. I am going to select my 10 gig test port queue and select port 1 for the client side and port 2 for the server side. CyberFlood allows you to configure the TCP options as needed for realistic staple traffic. As with all of the CyberFlood tests, the traffic mix is highly configurable. We can adjust the traffic percentages and we can drill down into each of the traffic categories. There are lots of DDoS and HTTP options that are configurable. Now we are ready to start the test. While the test is starting, we're going to configure the Spirant Network Emulator. This is the Spirant Network Emulator user interface. I am going to use the SNE to emulate the device under test for the CyberFlood DDoS test. That means I needed to limit the DDoS DNS flood while allowing the HTTP traffic. My first task is to create the upstream path to the CyberFlood emulated server. I am going to start by selecting the incoming and outgoing ports, the UDP filter, the packet delay tool, and the bandwidth throttle tool from the toolbox. I then need to create the links and drag the tools into place. The UDP filter is going to be used to send all of the DNS traffic to the bandwidth throttle tool before going out of port 2. The traffic that is not DNS will not go through the bandwidth throttle. All of the traffic will however go through the packet delay tool to simulate a WAN link. By default, the UDP filter just checks to see if the traffic is UDP or not. We need to switch to advanced mode so we can filter DNS on UDP port 53 to go through the bandwidth throttle. In the other direction from the server to the clients, I am only going to add delay so that we have 15 milliseconds of delay in each direction for 30 milliseconds of round trip delay. Custom descriptions can be given to each tool in the SNE.
you have probably been wondering about the yellow tabs between each tool. You can right click on any of the tab locations and add one or more tabs. I'm going to add a Wireshark tab and a Statistics Grab tab between the Bandwidth Throttle and the Outgoing Port 2. I am also going to add a Wireshark Statistics tab between the UDP filter and the Outgoing Port 2 and in the other direction before going out of Port 1. Let's add one last traffic capture tap on the upstream HTTP traffic. Back to the cyber flood test, we can see that the test is failing because we are sending and receiving 9 gigabits per second of DDoS traffic. The HTTP traffic is okay though because we are receiving 997 megabits per second of HTTP traffic. Now I am ready to start the SNE impairment tool. The three graphs immediately start at the bottom of the screen. The DNS graph shows that the DDoS traffic has been limited by the bandwidth throttle to 3 megabits per second. It looks like I chose megabytes per second for the HTTP up graph, so I'm going to go back and change it to megabits per second. Remember that the HTTP up graph is showing the HTTP request to the server and not the responses from the server, so the traffic is supposed to be quite low. When we open the running Wireshark capture, we can see that it is all DNS traffic and no HTTP traffic. The Traffic Capture tool saves the Capture Tool file instead of opening it in Wireshark. The file is located in the Capture Traffic Files directory. After I download and open the packet capture, we can see that it shows the non-DNS traffic. In this case, it is all HTTP GET requests from the client to the server. Now I'm going to stop the SNE impairment generator and take a look at the CyberFlood results again. The DDoS traffic is being received at 9 gigabits per second again but the HTTP traffic is still passing. That is it for today's video featuring CyberFlood and the Spirant Network Emulator. Please remember to hit the like and the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.